what is up ladies and gentlemen we are going to be kicking off in just a minute in literally just a minute if you could hit that like button hit that share button make sure that this content gets out to some new people to your friends your enemies because today we are going to be discussing rank choice voting we're going to be talking about the problems within our own democracy so it's not a conversation you want to miss so make sure you hit that like make sure you hit that share because we are going to be kicking off in in literally less than a minute All right, everybody, here we go. We are kicking things off. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Sorry, we got my buttons mixed up there. Uh, welcome to Road Reflections. This is this is uh, um, the daily video series that I'm doing whilst we are uh, in the age of quarantine. Um, and uh, this video is going to be coming in a little late, and I'm sorry about making it a little late, but I did... Uh, I, I kind of wound up sleeping in a bit today, wound up sleeping in a bit because, um, I stayed up watching Star Trek Insurrection. <laughs> I haven't done, like, I'm going to stay up and watch a movie in a really long time, but I wrapped up my stuff yesterday. Um, I wrote, uh, you know, a, a, a story from the road kind of thing for my website yesterday. I worked on... Taboo Table Talk, I recorded a podcast. I got a lot done. Um, I got a lot of writing done. I got a lot of thinking done. And um, one of the things I realized is I've got this piece that I'm working on about creating a new party, about third parties. And, um, you know, I have a lot of information that I have gathered just from doing these sort of impromptu videos where last week we talked about movement for a people's party. Um, this week we're talking about ranked choice voting. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I was like, oh, I, I actually have like a lot of information that I can siphon from, from all these notes that I've taken that, uh, and from the videos that I've done, I can kind of go back and see what loose ranty thoughts I can kind of grab and construct into more written, concise, uh, you know, more material that I can, I can present in a, in a slightly different context than what it was presented before. So I was thinking about that, and then uh, and then I looked at the clock, and by the time I was done with everything, it was like 11:45, and I decided that I was going to go to bed. And uh, you know, I finished uh, I finished this episode of S Star Trek: Deep Space Nine because I'm doing a big Star Trek kick right now. I started with uh, Next Generation um, back in February. Yeah, some so at, at the end of February, I started with Next Generation. I got through that. I'm working my way through. Um, which that fucking, it was amazing. Um, and uh, I'm working my way through Deep Space Nine, going to go through Voyager, finish off the, the last Next Generation movie, and then get into uh, Picard, and that'll kind of conclude what I have for, for the Star Trek series. I know people are saying that I should watch uh, Enterprise and Discovery as well, and I'll probably do that too. Uh, let's be honest. We're, I mean, it looks like this is going to go on till. Uh, May possibly into June and for me, you know, I'll I'll probably hopefully we'll we'll be we'll be kicking into gear soon with the, you know, get, kind of getting back into um, Being able to see people uh, And possibly talking about how to create a better society for ourselves because this society clearly isn't working anyway uh, that aside um, you know, so I basically decided that, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I want to you know, watch Insurrection. So I, I, I rented it and, uh, from, from the, the red box online and I kind of stayed up till 2 30 in the morning, uh, watching that movie. And, uh, and then I kind of passed out and I woke up pretty late, <laughs> which I don't, I haven't done that in forever. Um. So pardon the delay. I apologize that uh, that this is coming at you uh, a little later than um, than I wanted it to. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you got you got to take some leisure time um, for yourself every once in a while, and that was uh, that was a little bit of the leisure time that I took. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, so this video is slightly late because of because of that. I uh, want to remind everybody, if you haven't um, snagged that ticket for that test show uh, tomorrow, it's free, still a few spots remaining. Um, it's going to be kind of working out the kinks of what will eventually become my live stand-up comedy show, uh, live-ish, live stand-up comedy show on Zoom, uh, which will be different than actually coming to see me live when I come back to your city. Um, so if you are, uh, if you have... 30 to 40 minutes to spare, you know, um, grab the tickets. The ticket link is in the description of the video, and I'll add it to the comment section as I have been doing, um, you know, as of late, as of the, the last couple of days, just to kind of get people going. It's free. All I'm asking for is 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I'll run through some of the material I'm working on, and uh, some of the sort of dynamic elements, let's call it, that I'm trying to uh, kink out um, using kind of video clips and images and things of that sort and seeing how I can play with that. Because the format of the show is going to be different. The format of the show, in my opinion, I think has to be different. I think there has to be a little bit of dynamism to it. Um, and if I can't make that work, if there's too many issues... Uh, because, you know, I, I'm, I'm low tech. I'm, I'm just one person doing all of it. So I'm going to kind of work through the tech aspect of it as well as monitoring the show itself um, and, and performing the show itself. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a doozy. It's a bit of a, a couple different things going on there. But uh, coming to the test show will be super helpful because it'll just help me kind of gauge and get used to performing, um, you know, in an online uh, online format there. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, please, if you haven't, there's a couple spots left, um, snag those tickets. Uh, it'll also make it easier if you guys get those tickets, cause it'll just be one place that I'll have to send all of the information for the zoom show. So it just makes it a lot easier for me. Like I said, I'm just one person. I don't have like an assistant or like a, like a, like a tech director or something like that. Um, it's just me. I'm, I'm a one man operation. I'm a one man uh, working machine here, folks. So, uh, you know, I kind of depend on uh, audiences to <laughs> to help out a little bit, which is also why I always ask you guys to to share this, this 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 stuff out as much as you can. That is a huge, huge way um, of uh, of helping me out. So um, that's sort of the check in that, that we're doing. I'm, I've got a nice little weekend of. Uh, you know, with the show planned, I've got my Sunday to kind of chill and relax and take things easy uh, uh, and, and kind of take a day to, to clean and get my, get my head right and kind of uh, restore some energy is essentially what, uh, what my Sunday plans uh, at this moment are. But uh, I got a new notebook to work with, by the way, working with this composition, big, the big composition notebook so I don't have to strain my eyes. Brand new, brand new today. Uh, I, I also found these. Th uh, these are the notebooks that I've been using for road reflection. This is the most recent one that you guys will probably recognize from these videos. But this is what I had when I was doing it in the car. So, um, you know, at first, well, this one I think is the first one. Yeah, at first, the, the handwriting was pretty uh, relatively neat. And then, as you can see, it starts to get bigger and kind of chunkier uh, because it's like, okay, I got to I gotta get those ideas. Um, I got to get those ideas understood. Uh, you know, while I'm, while I'm driving, I can take a glance and say, oh, okay, we're talking about, uh, you know, even this is like, it's kind of neat, uh, neat-ish. Uh, and a lot of it is like I literally would make sure that I knew what the fuck I was talking about in the order that I was talking about before I would get into the vehicle, uh, you know. So it's kind of neat. It's but it's still nice and big that I can I can see it to go. Oh, okay, are we going to talk about how the lead singer of Mars Volta denounced Beto O'Rourke for his endorsement of Joe Biden? Uh, great. Let's uh, let's do that. So yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, this is the these are the two notebooks. Uh, that I used in the car. This is the notebook that I just finished off with uh, with the daily stuff. And then I just opened up a brand new one. Opened up this brand new one for today. 
So that's very exciting. I'm very excited to kick that off. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into Philosophy Friday, you guys. We're going to get right into it. This whole, uh, this whole show today is going to be about ranked choice voting, and uh, we're going to be kicking things off. I will talk about ranked choice voting, but I want to kind of lead up to why I want to talk about ranked choice voting. Why I think that this is going to be, um, in my opinion, the better way to move forward with our uh, election processes. Um, we have a big problem with our current election system. And uh, the big problem with our current election system right now is that it's corrupt, it's laundered with money, and both sides play this game. Um, it's actually not a democratic system. It is, a, uh, it is an oligarchical plutocratic system. It is a system that is governed by money, that uh, essentially rigs the rules, essentially bends and breaks the rules in various different ways to ensure that the candidate with the most corporate legitimacy wins not the candidate that the people have decided that they want but the candidate with the most corporate legitimacy and in 2016 that was trump trump in 2016 ended up being the candidate with the most corporate legitimacy that won in the democratic party uh, Hillary Clinton was the candidate with the most corporate legitimacy, uh, and uh, and they stole the election from Bernie. They they one hundred percent stole the election from Bernie, and they did it again. They did it again in twenty twenty. You know, um, the kind of hope that I had for twenty twenty going in, uh, why I put my backing behind candidates like Tulsi Gabbard. Um, you know, and, and I, I took a lot of shit for supporting Tulsi Gabbard. I took a lot of shit for supporting Bernie Sanders in fucking 2016. I took a lot of shit for it. And, but the reason why I supported those candidates is because one, they seemed genuine and two, they were saying stuff that I believed in. Um, and you know, had Tulsi Gabbard had an R by her name, I, and she was saying the exact same things that she was saying, I would have supported her at that point too. Um, you know, because she was talking about anti-militarism. She was talking about how economics is used in terms of warfare. She was talking about how uh, foreign policy and domestic policy are interlinked, interlinked with each other. And I believe all those things. Those are all the things that, you know, I, I had been talking about in my, in my stand-up, in my videos. Um, it, you know, uh, getting away from this, uh, this corporate party being, being more, so I, I was kind of talking about these populist ideas. So I believed in those things and I wanted to support a candidate and cast a vote based on my beliefs as I think it should be, as I think that's what democracy should be. And that's what you should be doing when you are casting a vote, you should be casting a vote for somebody or for an idea that you believe in. Now, there are members in the DNC. I was watching a video, and I should have written this fellow's name down. Uh, older gentleman, part of the DNC, part of the Democratic National Committee. And he, um, he kind of like made fun of people that, that, that said that they want to vote with their belief systems. Right. He was like, oh, you're being childish. It's childish to think that you can vote for your belief systems. You should vote for who we tell you to. That's the attitude that the DNC has. Right. Um, and. And because people were voting with that belief, system, that's why they went after Bernie Sanders as much as they did. So the Democratic Party plays this game where they rig the primary system against anybody that has like more progressive ideals, more democratic socialist ideals, more, you know, far, far more left than what the Democratic Party actually is, um, you know, and with Bernie Sanders, they did that by uh, manipulating the results. You know, what the machine results were, were saying did not match the exit poll results. Um, in this election alone, you had people like Lee Camp talking about it. You had whistleblowers from the electoral process talking about it. Uh, exit poll numbers in Texas, the state of Washington, Massachusetts, Minnesota, all of these, uh, 
compared to the machine votes, the machine votes were, were showing between 4 and 8% off. The exit poll results were showing that the machine results were, were 4 to 8% off. In order for you to redo an election, to redo the, the casting of the vote process, uh, the threshold is 2%. If it's off by 2%, if, if the exit poll says one number and then the machine votes say another number and those numbers are, are off by 2%, they have to redo it. We're looking at exit poll numbers that are showing that the machine votes were off by 4 to 8%, two to four times larger than what is the actual threshold. And the Democratic Party was like, no, 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 no. Joe Biden won those states. No, he didn't. There was, in Texas alone, 4% of the vote showed that there was a discrepancy between Biden and Bernie votes. And then, by, uh, and then Bernie and, uh, uh, fuck, what was that rich billionaire's name that no one cares about? I forgot his name because he's so irrelevant in my mind. Bloomberg. That's how much his money matters. Like, But my brain was just like, you're not a relevant person, you slave labor using piece of shit. <laughs> um, but they were 4% off just in Texas alone, right? And this, this and, and, and then in Dallas County, they reported that four, 44 USBs of voters, uh, of votes were just uncounted. Wonder who those votes were for, right? Like wonder why they decided not to use those 44 USBs. That's very strange. Shouldn't we open it up? Shouldn't we... Um, you know, look into what's going on. Why are these votes not being counted? And that can't be the only votes that weren't counted. You know, I'm, I'm sure if you, if you, if, if we dig a lot deeper and I'm sure there are people digging a lot deeper into this, they will find that the, the DNC has not counted certain votes. They will find that the DNC is trying to skew the votes away so that it seems it seems like the majority of the votes actually went to someone like Joe Biden. When in reality, they didn't. The numbers are, are, are falsified or manipulated. The machines are, I mean, they're black box machines. They're black box voting machines, right? They're, they're like not... Um, they're not secure and the propriety proprietary codes are owned by the corporations the diebold corporation owns the the codes and they're not publicly verified and that's just in this election that's just 2020 that this stuff was was, was revealed if we go back and look further 2016 is almost play by play the exact same just replace biden with clinton Right, just replaced Bloomberg with Clinton, and that's exactly what was going on. Um, so the DNC was sued for this stuff in 2016. And in front of a judge, the DNC said that it is our legal right to cheat and pick the candidate that we want. The DNC and the RNC as well, they're both private corporations that control our elections. That means the private sector is the one making the decisions. Just based on that fact alone, you can see that the private sector is what is controlling our election system on a primary level. On the primary level, the direct Democrats are doing this. And then there was an MSNBC interview where someone from the DNC was basically like, yeah, no, look, the party picks the candidate, the party picks the nominee, and then you get to vote for who, you, who we tell you you should vote for as a Democrat. You don't get to make that actual choice. That's, that's who these Democrats are. And that's, that's how they kind of work the system. And to them, this is necessary, right? This facade, of, this facade they run in the primary system for voting is absolutely necessary because there were two instances where we saw at, at least two instances that, that I've been able to find um, I'm sure that there are more instances of this in possibly lower uh, down ballots, uh, down ballot vote elections. But there are two instances in history with, with presidential elections, specifically where 
you know, the candidates circumvented the, um, the voters, the electorate, the constituency, and they went straight to the delegates, the people that are really making the decision of who gets to be the nominee. Right? It's, it's, not, it's not us. It, it all goes to that convention where the delegates make that choice. The delegates are the ones that say, hey, this guy is your nominee, and you got to vote for this person. And if you don't vote for this person, you're voting for the opposition, right? That bullshit argument that they throw out there. Um, so the first one is 1912 with Taft versus Roosevelt. That brought this election up uh, before. Uh, Taft got the nomination because he directly skipped the constituents and went for the delegates. And he, was ba and he basically talked to the delegates, got a bunch of funding, and then he won the nomination for the Republican Party in 1912. And... Theodore Roosevelt looked at that and was like, nah, this is bullshit, son. This is bullshit. This ain't how you play this game. And so he created his own party. He created the Bull Moose Party and went against Taft, uh, who he pointed out was skipping the voters and that the voters don't make the calls. And he got 20% of the vote. Now, Theodore Roosevelt... And Taft had name recognition. Woodrow Wilson had name recognition. They also had a ton of money behind them. <laughs> um, so, so they were able to get a good amount of votes when they created uh, the Bull Moose Party. A um, lot of name recognition, especially the name recognition was, was I think, big in terms of creating um, this, this new party. Uh, so then in 1968, you got Hubert Humphrey, who didn't campaign in any state, but won the Democratic nomination uh, because the delegates picked him. And it showed people that they, like, weren't, like, the votes didn't really matter, right? Like, the electorate didn't really matter. They don't give a shit about the electorate. And there were a bunch of riots. So then the DNC was like, all right, we'll do it differently. In the 1972, they went with a popular vote. And the people picked George McGovern, who was an anti-war left-wing populist that some people might say is pretty similar to um, Bernie Sanders. Right. And uh, and then the DNC basically tanked the election for him. He went up against Nixon and won one state. I think he won Massachusetts because they ran a fucking red scare smear campaign against their own guy. They were just like, fuck it. We don't want we don't want this person to represent the Democratic Party because that's not what the Democratic Party is supposed to be. OK, the Democratic Party is supposed to be the party of corporations with a blue tie. It's very, it's very important. The color of the tie is really important because then you figure out what team you're on, um, and uh, and uh, th then it doesn't matter because you get money anyway. Now, uh, you know the 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 Republicans play this money game as well. They they also play this money game, and they also play this um, defrauding the voter game where they make sure that your votes don't get counted, that you make sure that your votes don't get seen. The way they do it is with gerrymandering. They, they redraw these state lines, right? Or, or these, um, these uh, vote lines, they pick their own constituents and shit like that. Uh, some of these, the way they redraw these lines is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, I think one of them looks like a dong. Like there, I, I I remember seeing an image uh, a while back, uh, where where it just uh, it's it's like one of these gerrymandered um, sections or whatever you want to call them, uh, just just look like a penis, and uh, and it was like oh yeah uh, of course Republicans didn't see that because they're all sexually repressed so they probably haven't even seen their own junk in quite some time. Um, you know, because Jesus doesn't want them to look at their dongs. Uh, that means you're gay or whatever. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that thought process even works. But uh, the Republicans use this thing called interstate crosscheck, which primarily votes in uh, in general elections. It, this, this doesn't really work work a whole lot in the primaries for them. Um, it, it is a tactic specifically built to uh, decrease the amount of votes that the Democrats are going to get. Basically, what it does is it looks through the registry 
of people that voted and let's say there is a um, there's a Krish Mohan in Pennsylvania and then there's a Krish Mohan in Virginia and they go uh oh there's th it, this is the same name it skips middle names it skips um, junior senior um, you know it could be Krish Mohan the third it doesn't matter it looks at the last name and the f and it goes oh there's a Mohan here there's a Mohan here what's the first name oh it's Krish Krish uh oh th this looks like it might be the same person it doesn't go beyond that and then it removes both the voters. Now, primarily, this affects minority voters, it affects black voters, uh, and it affects voters that, that uh, reasonably vote Democratic. They vote for the Democratic Party. Uh, so it removes them from the, from the ballot under the claims, of, oh, it's, it, it's getting rid of you know, people that vote twice. They're voting twice, which has literally never been proved. It's, it's like, there, I think there might have been like one case of it or something like that. Like, it's literally, like, it's such a minuscule amount of people that do it. It's it's like the people, like, that are like, uh, um, like, it, it's like some crime that's so outrageous and over the top. And they're like, we have to make sure this epidemic stops, you know, of... It's like, can like people that are just like serial cannibals. There's like 10 of them. And they're like, we got to stop this epidemic of cannibalism across this country. There's a wave. There's people eating people everywhere. You've got to be scared of it. And it's just like, what? There's like 10 of them. And they're all kind of, I think they're all in prison. They're all, I think they're all in prison right now. It's crazy. Like they're all, you know, and it's just like, so this has never happened. And they're like, hey, we got, this is, this is how we stop it. We are putting an end to these people, they're just crossing, like even if I wanted to, think of how absurd that is. From Pittsburgh, just to get to Northern Virginia is four and a half hours. So that means I would have to wake up, go in, and let's, I, I would never fucking vote for Joe Biden. Um, you know, so I go in and I vote, and let's say I make a vote for Dario Hunter from the Green Party, right? I go in at eight o'clock, I'm the first one, I hit that Green Party button, and then I get into my car and I hike it. I'm just fucking hauling ass, right? And then from like, and then I get to Virginia around, let's say, 1 p.m. Around 1 p.m., I get to Virginia. I find a polling station. I have to figure out how to get a re Virginia reg a voter registration, right? Uh, uh, you know, let's say I, I, I've, I've done it through some shady means. I met a guy in a back alley. So by 3 p.m., I find a polling station. Right after I've 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 done this shady backdoor fucking clothes hanger voter registration, and I go in and I cast my second vote. Boom! Do you really think I'm gonna use my own name when I do that shit? First of all, and second of all, holy shit, is that a long day, dude? I don't have time for that. I did, like nobody has the time for that. Most people don't even get the day off to vote. Most people have to figure out how to vote in between their jobs. Like, how are we going to cross state lines? You know, even to get to, like, Youngstown, Ohio is an hour from where I'm at. How are the, how are, what, what is the, the, the rationale to do that? That's such a waste of time. It's so crazy, but that's what they do. They, they use this interstate cross-check program to look at last names and first names, and that's it, and they start taking voters out. And sure, yes, there is a possibility that it'll affect, you know, uh, some Republican voters, but again, it's middle-class voters, so to them, who gives a shit? It's not really that important. They bought their way out of the election. We just have to make it look like, um, you know, we got to make sure that these these popular vote numbers are are manipulated just enough so that there's more bickering and argument within within the the average citizenship and and then we can just keep using money to control their elections anyway cuz again the RNC just like the DNC is a private corporation that controls their elections the one thing that you know with with this delegate process that's a similarity this this voter corruption the the way that they manipulate vote that's a similarity between the two parties Um, both parties have a, a, a problem with money. It takes a lot of money to run these elections. It takes a lot of money to 
uh, run as a can like a candidate. You know, in most cases, candidates that win are like they they spend millions of dollars, billions of dollars in some cases. Like Hillary Clinton spent, what was it like? Like billions of do- I think like two billion dollars, or something like that. That's so fucking nuts. Two billion dollars, and then she still lost, which I think is why she's pissed. Uh, like, like she hasn't let go of it. She keeps talking about. It. And then she keeps, like, blaming other people for it. She's like, well, Russia, boo. You know, it's like, boo, Russia, boo. Like, it's just fucking, dude, you were a bad candidate. Just accept that you were a shit candidate with shit policies that nobody wanted to support because you come from this, like, political dynasty of bullshit. Anyway, uh, (laughs) it takes a lot of money. I think there's like a minimum amount of money that you have to reach um, just in order to be able to run. Uh, And there's a guy by the name of Lawrence Lessig. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know who Lawrence Lessig is. Um, I've I've watched a couple of his TED Talks. Uh, I've I've listened to him on Rogan. He's he's a really good speaker, and he really the way that he presents information, um, I really like it, and I recommend you guys go check him out. He talks about this idea that um, candidates will spend most of their time fundraising. From the second that they're elected to, a majority of their job is just fundraising fundraising for the next election so that they can hold on to their seat. 30 to 70 percent is dialing for dollars is what uh, is what he said. Um, And this way and then he just keeps asking people for money. Right. Um, Or he or she, whoever the candidate is, uh, they just ask for, for, they just try to fundraise. It's most of their job. The most of their job is fundraising so that they can um, get reelected. It's not actually legislating and doing the work for the people. Um, it's making money and deals with corporations and the elites, right? And, and, that's what, and that's a lot of what it is. It's not like, you know, fucking Mitch McConnell is calling the, uh, you know, fucking small business bakery owner in Frankfort, Kentucky. He's calling the dude that owns the fucking coal mines in Kentucky and is like, yo, you want to drop some hard cash into my, yo, you want to campaign for me? You want to tell your employees that they should vote for me? Shit like that. In 2016, uh, half of the money that uh, that funded these campaigns, half of the money in, in that funded the political campaigns in 2016, in the 2016 election, which started in 2015, by the way, five years ago, uh, came from 400 families. Um, so that is $5,200 is the maximum individual contribution that you can make um, in... Uh, uh, in, in, in these things. And from that data, um, that would be 57,854 people that made that maximum contribution of $5,200. The main individual contribution of $5,200. That's 0.2% of our population. Hong Kong did the same thing, where 0.2% of the populace that was pro-business and pro-corporation made a decision about who the nominee is going to be. And then they presented that to the people and the people were like, see, you get to vote for these two. Now, students rioted against that. They pro- Well, they didn't riot. It's the wrong word. Sorry about that. Uh, they protested against it. Um... But, you know, electability and credibility is only determined by the candidate that has the most amount of money. Joe Biden gets funded by super PACs. Joe Biden gets funded by um, billionaires that make this individual $5,200 contribution. And then they'll put money into super PACs that essentially campaign for Joe Biden. Um, 
Credibility is determined by money. 0.2% of the people control who becomes that nominee, who we get to see in that presidential uh, uh, race from these two major parties. This is not democracy for the people. This is democracy for the funders, which is a plutocracy. It's an oligarchy where the rich determine who the leaders are. And the leaders are going to do what these funders want them to. And there's proof that that's how it works, too. Um, there was a Princeton study that basically showed uh, that when it comes down to making legislation in, in relation to the views of economic elites versus special interest groups, um, what that looks like when, when they reach a majority. So check this out. For economic elites, the more, uh, the more preference there is, the more uh, likelihood um, that the, uh, the legislation is going to pass, right? So you're looking at uh, predicted probability of adoption, um, that's 0.7, so that's like 70%. By the time it gets to 100%, you're looking at 40% uh, of the cases are at least going to get 70% of the consideration. Let's go to a different one. Special interest groups. Same thing. There's a nice little spike once you start getting to more and more people. And then when you look at the average citizens, doesn't matter. It's about a 20% about a chance that this shit gets done. About a 20% chance that when we call for progressive ideologies, about a 20% chance, regardless of whether it's 10% of the people asking for it or 100% of the people asking for it. Compare that to this. Boy, that's a different spike, isn't it? Or this. Versus that. It's the money, baby. It's inequality. It's inequality in the electoral process. It means that our electoral process is controlled by the rich. And that's a Princeton study that did it. I mean, that's a pretty, um, pretty corporate school. Uh, and, and, and this goes against what most of our founding fathers actually wanted for this country. They wanted the voice of the people to determine, um, you know, what, what the direction of this country was supposed to go in. And we are going against that because what we have done is say, well, if you have more money, then you have more of a voice. And that's just straight up wrong. And that's really what's wrong with our democratic process. That it's not, the, it does, it's not representative of the voice of the people. It's representative based on how much money you have in your bank account. My voice doesn't matter that much because I don't have that much in my bank account. According to this system, that's how it operates. Because I can't throw in $5,200 at a candidate that I like, I threw maybe five bucks into Tulsi Gabbard's campaign. And, uh, and that's really all I could afford because the rest of it went into making sure I was paying my bills, making sure there was gas in my tank, making sure that there was food on my table, um, making sure that uh, you know I was able to pay the people that I needed to pay that were opening my shows when I was able to pay them. All that stuff. So I threw a little bit in. And because of that little bit, according to, according to this electoral process, um, my voice doesn't really matter all that much. And the candidate that I supported doesn't really matter all that much. Because the, be, I, either it was Tulsi or Bernie, it didn't matter. Because they weren't taking corporate money. Because they weren't being funded by these special interest groups. They don't really matter. They don't have legitimacy or credibility behind what they're saying. 
That's the problem with the electoral system that we are working with today. So now we hear this other argument, right? This lesser of two evil. Now that we have this situation, the, the elites have picked their candidate. They've picked the, they've picked the Joey B's, the Joe Biden's. They picked the Hillary Clinton's. What do we do? What do we do going forward? So the initial argument is as it, as it has been fucking she, like I, I I I can't even remember when I started hearing this argument. I started hearing this argument quite uh, like a while ago, right? Is vote for the lesser of two evils. Well, here's the problem with that. This voting for the lesser of two evils. You're still voting for fucking evil. Why why what what is the purpose of that? Right? Like people always want to complain, "Oh man, this country's broken. This electoral system's broken. We don't have all these things." Yeah, you, you want to know why we have some of the major problems we still have in this country? Why we haven't passed uh, a, a Medicare for all in this country? Why we haven't why we haven't increased a minimum wage? Why we don't we don't have a livable wage? Why we have this vast income disparity in this country? What with this income inequality? Why black people are still being murdered by the police in this country? Why minorities are not really taken uh, you, you know seriously seriously and their lives aren't, aren't uh, mattering to certain people as much? Why the immigration system is as broken as as it is? You want to know why all these problems still exist? Because you still keep voting for fucking evil. Evil doesn't want to fix any of this shit. Joe Biden has no interest in fixing it. Joe Biden was part of the administration that came up with ICE in 2009. That was the Obama administration. The Obama administration deported more immigrants than, uh, than any of the other administrations beyond him. I'm not saying that the Republicans are excused from any of this, but let's look at the reality of this two-party system. It's not all that different. Obama was the one that ramped up the wars from two to seven, creating more xenophobia and racism towards brown people in this country. You think that a closed-minded individual gave a shit what brown country I was from? They didn't care. They saw that we're bombing brown people and brown people are the terrorists regardless of who was in office because patriotism and I got shit on, regardless of what it is, regardless of which party was in office. That's voting for the lesser of two evils. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to feel better about the racism that I uh, endured during the Obama administration because a black man was in, pre in, in, in the office. Oh, oh, I, I, oh you're, you're right. That racism is different. Than the racism I felt under Bush. You're right. The term camel jockey means com something completely different under Obama than it did under Bush. Totally different. Telling me to go back to my own country was, was totally different under Obama than it was under Bush, right? The hate that gay people felt under Obama was totally different under Bush. What a lunatic idea this is. That voting for the lesser of two evils is actually going to mean anything. It's not. It's still a vote for evil. And it's still not going to accomplish what we are trying to accomplish. There's an argument of voting, uh, voting pragmatically by choosing the lesser of two evils. When has choosing evil been a pragmatic decision to make? I see these people, I, I, very smart, intellectual, compassionate individuals that would have never stood by the shit that Joe Biden stood by. Not once. Joe Biden voted with segregationists, was against busing because taxes. Treated Anita Hill like shit because he is a sexual assaulter and a rapist himself. That he believed that his position of power allowed him to do whatever he wanted with women. That's who Joe Biden is. That's no different than Trump. Joe Biden literally said, 
literally said, if Medicare for All came to my desk, I would veto it. The only thing that he didn't do was say that this, this was, you know, used a socialist boogeyman argument that, that Trump would have used, that the Republicans would have used, but they would have said the same thing. Oh, if it came to my desk, I would veto it. And you know what's crazy is Trump's not even doing that right now. He's giving his own version of Medicare for All. This, this sort of like small little, 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 little compromise to it, right? Joe Biden's not even willing to do that. The lesser of two evils doesn't... What? The lesser of two evils, has, that argument has no place in American democracy. So some people are going to, well, what choice do we have? What choice do we have? Well, you have third parties. Oh, everybody goes, oh, spoiler, spoiler, third parties, just spoilers. It's like, it's like going to watch Avengers Endgame it, 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 the, the day that it comes out and then walking out of the theater and going, man, did you guys see that Tony Stark is going to die? By the way, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame by now, what the fuck, you guys? Okay, Disney Plus is out. It's, it's been available for like a year That's more on you than it is on me. That's like if you if, if you watched Fight Club and was just like, holy shit, could you believe that Tyler Durden and the narrator were the same character? By the way, if you haven't seen Fight Club, what the fuck, guys? Come on, it's been out for like 20 years, okay? I saw that shit when I was like 15. Come on, come on. It's been out for a very long time. Come on, get your shit together. Get your shit together. That's like going to see The Sixth Sense and being like, by the way, did you know that Bruce Willis was in that movie? Come on, guys. Bruce Willis is in that movie. If you haven't seen The Sixth Sense, what do you... You get it. You understand. <laughs> Third parties, by the way, have been around for a very long time. The Green Party has been around for a long time. The fucking Socialist Party... The, there was a Socialist Party in 1912. Bull Moose Party, 1912. America used to have more than two parties forever. Fucking Lincoln was part of a third party. So it's not spoilers. This is what American d democracy is supposed to be. This is this is that freedom of choice that everybody wants, right? How much time? How many? How many times do you hear both sides talking about choice? The, oh man, I got the. I need this choice. This choice is so important to me. Right, that they'll—I mean, people will scream till their throats are bloody and dry about the, about their freedoms and their choice. Right, this is my body, my choice. It's my choice to wear a mask. Okay, if I—it's uh, my choice to say and do whatever I want because choice is freedom. Yet, when we are given real choices, when it comes to the election, when real choices are presented to you in an electoral process. You don't want to take it. You want to stay in this duopoly that you have. You want to make the choice to, 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 to enslave ourselves with this two-party system, enslave ourselves to choosing evil. Why? What's the purpose of it? Well, I want to win. I want to be a winner because winner takes all. That's what, that's what it is. Winner, well, in most of these cases, the winner is not even the fucking majority. Shouldn't you have a system that kind of is a little bit more fair and can determine the majority in a smarter way? And third parties are not spoilers, okay? What they are is proof that the American belief system doesn't just check off two boxes. It's not red or blue, okay? They believe in, in a vast variety of things. Our belief systems uh, are, are far more diverse and far more intricate than saying that it's either Democrat or Republican who barely, barely can differentiate themselves at this point. The American belief system does not believe in special interests or the profit margins of the rich. This means that we want to vote with our belief system. The fact that people are voting for third parties, the fact that people do support third parties in America, that they want third party representation and they want third party ballot access in America, that shows you that they don't want corporations controlling this shit. That shows you that there's no duality in this, uh, that, 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 that there's, there's no black or white in our belief system. 
that what we are voting for it, when we vote for it, with, with third party is with the best interest of our fellow humans, with our hearts and our minds, with our emotions and logic. Voting for a, a, the, the duopoly of evil is none of these things. Is none of these things. And it brings us to how ranked choice voting is actually going to work. Uh, it's going to defeat this oligarchical democracy that we have, right? So if you're confused about what ranked choice voting is, uh, it's basically, it allows, it, it specifically allows for uh, multiple parties, right? It pushes for this notion of, of having multiple parties, which you know, in a, in, a, in a corporate oligarchical democracy like the one that we have now, third parties are going to be treated like an, like they're, they're a, a, an allergic parasitic infection that we need to eradicate from our world, right? Like this notion, but, but it's like, no, that, that, that's choice. That's choice. It's more choice. It's not fucking just red or blue. It's just more choices. We need more choices. And it, it uses a ranking system, ranked choice voting ranking system so you have uh, a bunch of different choices and you rank them you go one two three four five right check off boxes there's very very different ways to do it the state of maine is doing this now um and uh this goes through various different rounds of voter counts till we arrive at a majority so if you're confused about how this how, how the counting system actually works Right. Uh, it can be confusing. Um, it can be confusing if you're uncertain about how things work. So let's look at I put together a very nice little slideshow for you. OK, so uh, we you, you look at a ballot and you look at five different parties. You have Democrat, Republican, Green Party, Libertarian, Independent. Let's just say those are the five parties, right? This is a hypothetical situation before everybody sits losing their shit to be like, where's the constitutional party? And where is the... It's, relax. It's, this is a hypothetical. Let's do it with five. Let's not overcomplicate things uh, while we're still learning about this. Uh, so you run your votes, right? And you run your votes and, uh, and you take them off. You have five parties and you go one, two, three, four, five. Um, and look, you don't have to make a choice for all five. Like, let's say you only believe in what the Green Party says and what the Democrats say and what the Libertarians say. You don't care for the independent candidate and you don't care for the Republican candidate. You don't even want them to, you don't even have to bear a choice for that. Okay, then you put that, you just, you don't count them in your ranking. That, that's, that's totally allowed in this system. You don't have to put a ranking system into it. Um, so the first round, everybody counts. What they count is, uh, the number ones, right? How many people voted for the Democrat as their number one choice? How many people voted for the Republicans as their number one choice? The Green Party, the Libertarians, the Independents as their number one choice. Uh, and let's say these are the hypothetical results, right? The Democrats are winning. They got 22%. The Republicans are 20, uh, or, sorry, the Democrats are 28. The Republicans at 22. The Green Party at 18. Um, and the Libertarians at 21. And the Independents, unfortunately, get 11% of the vote, which means uh, nobody got a majority. What we're trying to get to is that 51% at that bottom. Uh, we're trying to get to that 51% um of the votes. That's what that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a tr a what what some might call a true majority. So right now there's no true majority in this situation. Right? There's no true majority in this situation. So uh, what what the next part of this process is is we'll say okay, the 11% of the people that voted independence as their number one choice, uh, we're going to take the independent candidate out. They didn't make it, uh, but those 11% of the people don't lose their voice. They have not lost their voice. They take that 11% of people that voted for independent as their number one, and they all look at what their number two choice are, and then they add those votes. They redistribute those votes, the number two position from all of the independents into the rest of the thing. So the independents 
are out. There's no more independents, unfortunately, but they're number two. Um, we look at the difference, right? We had, we had that, and now we look at this. Some people voted for the Republicans, a little bit, a little bump on the Republicans. But there was a good bump on the Green Party, and there was a good bump on the Libertarians. Uh, but it does look like, unfortunately, the Republicans didn't get enough of the votes in the second round, right? They didn't get enough. Of, so we had the Republicans leading. We had the Republicans leading. And, uh, and very quickly, we saw Green Parties and Libertarians because the independents, um, their second choice was possibly Green Parties and Libertarians, mostly. Uh, so the Republican Party is now removed. So out of all of the people that voted for the Republican Party, we now look at who their number two choice was. And... From the independents, whose number two was Republican, we go down to number three. So we go to the next rank down, right? So then we see that, okay, there was a little bit of a bump uh, for the Democrats, but really there was a big bump for the Libertarians and the big bump for the Green Party. So all of a sudden now, the Green Party and the Libertarians are neck and neck. They're looking pretty damn good. Uh, I did not adjust the rectangles properly. I'm sorry about that. Uh, for people that are going to freak out, let's just look at the numbers. It's fine. Um, but, <laughs> but now the Democrats are out because the Democrats didn't get enough votes. So now you go and you look to the next rank on everybody that chose the Democrats, right? So this might have some Republicans that chose Democrats as their number two or their number three. So now we have to go look at who their number four choice was. And then if you're, if you're a Democrat that voted Democrat number one, uh, you look at who their number two was. If their number two was a Republican or an Independent, then you go to their number three and see who that was. And, and you know, likely that might have ended up being somebody from the Green Party. Um, and the numbers kind of rise up, and now we have a majority, right? So it seems like it's a little bit more complicated. I get it. I hope this kind of... The graph was supposed to explain it a little bit better, and I hope that kind of helped. But essentially, it's a ranking system until you get to that majority, until you get to this part where you have a majority, right? And that's what you want. Um, usually, this system is called the instant runoff uh, or a single transferable. That's uh, what it's called. And the reason why this works, the reason why I think this is better state of Maine thinks it's better, the country of Australia, Ireland, uh, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Italy, various smaller states think it's better. Min Minnesota's trying it. Minneapolis and St. Paul are doing this in their elections. The reason why there's a trend of all this stuff rising is because the votes are more unique based on the patterns. There's less of a chance that there is going to be some kind of voter fraud. There's this fear that the Republicans have of, oh my God, there's going to be people crossing over states and voting two, three, fifteen times against the Republicans. That's not going to be a problem. Because why would somebody do, not, not that I'm saying that that is what people do, but why would somebody feel like they need to vote two or three times? Well, maybe because they feel like their voice isn't going to be heard. In this instance, your voice is heard, no matter what. It's not going to be your ideal candidate that might win, but you might get two or three. And look, what I presented, um, we went through like three different rounds of voting, which I understand probably is what complicated things, but that might not have been the case, right? Maybe, maybe all of the independents, a majority of the independents, their number two was the Democrats, which pushed the Democrats up by 30 points. You, who knows? Right, It might only go two rounds. It might go three rounds, and that's it. We figure out the, the results from there. But the idea is to use this ranking system and move down the ranks to find out who the actual majority is. It involves some math. It involves some counting. It makes the, the counting process a little bit longer. But that's okay because, in my opinion, this is more democratic with less of a chance of money and corporate special interests getting in the way. 
Because it's more public and it has, and, and we can verify this publicly a lot more. Uh, we wouldn't use this electronic counting system, um, you know, this black box system of counting uh, that, you know, like Diebold owns most of the counting systems. We won't see that sort of stuff. It can, there's a possibility of it, but that's why you would incorporate laws to make sure that corporations aren't getting involved with the electoral process. What does this mean? Well, this means that all of the candidates are now going to have to know all of their constituents. That means you're going to need to know what corporate Democrats really stand for as a member of the Green Party, right? People that have, the people that want to vote for the Democratic candidate, you got to see if they if if they're going to make you their number two choice. So you got to go. Well, what is it going to take? What is it about the Green Party message that uh, you know mainstream Democrats can't get behind? You know, what is it about the libertarian message that a Democrat can't get behind, right? And Democrats are going to have to do the same thing. So right now, I mean, you had Elizabeth Warren coming out and being like, I'm not even worried about anybody that's going to vote for Republican. I don't give a shit about them. And you're running for a presidential election? No, you have to care about them because they're part of the entire country that you want to fucking lead. This makes you do that. This makes you go, well, I'm going to need to get on that ranking system. I'm going to need to get to the number two or number three position. What do I need to do to do that, right? How do I talk to these people? How do I use their language to convey my message? So it makes for a little bit more of a well-rounded candidate um, that you can stick to your message but go, okay, listen, I think libertarians are worried about uh, taxation and they want a flat tax. All right, well, I'm not really for a flat tax, but look, here's my tax program and here's what I'm willing to kind of adjust to maybe hit that flat tax point. Maybe I'll maybe I'll move move this around just a little bit. So now maybe the libertarians are going to say, "Hey, that Green Party member looks pretty damn good." I I agree with about I'll say 55% of what you're saying, but if you make that adjustment, it'll go up to 58 and you'll be my number 2 choice. Not bad. Same thing with the Democrats, right? Same thing with Republicans. You got to listen to them. You got to go into Republican areas and you got to sit down with some folks. Sure. May, I mean, our campaign process is long enough as it is. But this gets rid of the corporate interest because the corporate interest has nothing to do with the rank choices. It has nothing to do with it. There's no delegate system involved. There's no convention involved. Because this would go all the way down, too, by the way. This wouldn't just be for the presidential thing. So, you know, if it's, if it's for five different Democratic candidates, um, you run it the same way. Yes, the process is going to be a little bit longer. But maybe we don't do this Super Tuesday and this primary caucus bullshit that we have to do. And we get in around like sometime in April and everybody fucking makes a decision together. All 50 states will, will vote for somebody in the, or, or March, whatever, pick a date, right? March 15th. If we all go in and every state makes their pick and then for the next two weeks we publicly verify and make sure that the election is counted properly, make sure that the results aren't being manipulated, take the effort. And not just that, but now, while we're having these discussions, we're going to have to, as people, get along with each other. As people, we're going to have to sit across the table from a conservative or a libertarian or a Democrat or a Green Party or an independent or a constitutionalist and go, well, tell me about what you believe. Why do you want to support this candidate? What is it about this candidate that's interesting to you? How do they value your... Can I give you my thing of why I think my candidate would make a good number two for you? You don't have to vote for them as your number one, but maybe consider them for a number two or, or even a number three position, right? So now we're not going with this winner take all, like, you have to vote the same way I do. Are you fucking, are you out of your goddamn, no, it's just, okay, that's an interesting way to, way to look at this country. I, I would have never thought about it this way. Can I give you an, another perspective that maybe you, maybe this can be your number two perspective. We treat each other with a little bit more 
compassion. We become a little bit more intellectual as a society with this voting system. We look at politics in a different way because now, just even, even on a smaller level, we are able to communicate and participate in an election system. We are participating in our government. And some people are like, oh, the election process is complicated as it is. Yeah, it's complicated because there's moneyed interests involved. It's complicated because they are making it complicated. The difference between caucuses and pri who gives a shit? Make a vote. Count the vote. That's what it should be. That's what this does. This makes it a little bit more fair, and this makes it a little bit more easy to reach that majority. It makes it a little bit more um, necessary for us to understand each other. And like I mentioned to, to some members of the DNC, which is a private corporation that controls our elections, they literally have lobbyists on their board making those decisions of who your nominee is. This is the Democratic National Convention that represents the Democratic Party. Same thing with the Republicans. They do this shit too. So really, what's the difference? They're both money, corporate interest parties. They don't like this process. They think it's an outrage, right? This, oh, participation award bullshit. It's not participation award. It's trying to get to an actual majority. It's trying to get to a good majority without this notion of spoilers. It's trying to diversify the, the political thought in this country. Be but they don't like this process because they don't get to pick the winner. They don't get to call the shots. They don't get to put their money and make that their mouth. This would eradicate the spoiler argument. It would eradicate this winner-take-all, wins-and-loses point of view. And it makes us go back to that compassionate ideology. What we're going to do with a ranked choice voting system, should we choose to move forward with it, just like Maine did, just like Minneapolis, St. Paul did, it's like Australia, Ireland, all these other countries and all these little areas did, if we choose to move forward with it as a country, we can now officially vote with our belief systems in mind. Vote with that compassion in mind. Vote with understanding your neighbors in mind. People that are against it are against the idea of doing that. They're against the idea of coming together as a community. Uh, Joe Biden is not for this. Trump probably isn't for this. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump just came out and was just like, yeah, let's strength choice vote. I would be. I'm fine with it. Let the people, let the people. But maybe this will also get us to a point where um, we, instead of trying to vote for a person or like this specific candidate or something, we start voting for ideas, right? So then we can kind of look at the notion of healthcare and be like, okay, how do we want to move forward? Uh, we have uh, the Australian model of healthcare. We have this Medicare for all pers being put forward by you know the the Bernie Sanders and the Jaya Pauls. And then we have the cur current corporate system. Let's see which one people are going to rank the most, and then make a and then pass that legislation and move forward with that idea. That would be an interesting way of completely transforming the democracy. Using ranked choice system not to vote for particular political parties or candidates, but for ideas and putting those ideas forward. Kind of pushing us into that self-governance idea, that self-determining idea. I know it's a bit wild, it's a bit radical, it's a bit bold, it's out there, it's crazy. How would you ever... We start with this, though. We start with trying to look for a ranked choice voting system and trying to make that work. We try to start understanding what people from different belief systems actually believe and why they believe it. Why do they think that's the best way to move forward for this entire country? 
let's try it. Let's try something a little bit different than what's already been put in place. All right, folks, that's the episode. Uh, once again, I'm sorry about the delay. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a little bit different. Um, we are. It, it is one of those things where I, I like talking about this one idea and seeing how it kind of fits into all this stuff. Uh, and ranked choice voting was something I was I was trying to look into and understand a little bit more and what people have to say about it and everything. Uh, you know, um, it is go, it is a different style and it's a it's something that I think we need to try. It's something that I hope that we'll we'll enact as a nation. Um, and try to create a more fair election process, uh, and less corporate election process. So uh, if you guys did enjoy it, please share it out. Please let some folks know about it because this sort of stuff does not really get shown to a whole lot of people. Um, you know, the, the, the technocracy is not a fan of what I have to say. <laughs> uh, so uh, please share it. Please get the word out. Please tell some, some, some people about it. Um, and uh, like I said, tomorrow is that Zoom test show, uh, so please check it out. Please get the tickets. There are still a few spots available. Uh, snag those tickets. Uh, the ticket link is important because that's where you're going to receive the information about how to log into the Zoom show with the password of the meeting ID and things of that sort. I will be sending that out an hour before the show. The show is at 8.30, which means 8.30 Eastern, which means you will be getting it at 7.30 Eastern time. Um, what else? Uh, you can, um, you can uh, donate to my stuff if you would like to make a donation. Uh, that's available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, I also have a shirt. I, I, I have t-shirts, like this is a shirt. I, I designed this in a duopoly. Your vote is not your belief system. Uh, kind of going in line with what we talked about today. Uh, that is available on my Teespring page. I have a. I, I don't like carrying shirts when I do live stand-up comedy uh, because it's annoying. <laughs> uh, so you can get it on an individual basis there. That's another way to support the show and you know support that you're uh, a, a fan or supporter of of the shit that I do. Um, so there, there's that option. Uh, available. Uh, I'll link the Teespring in the comments and in the description of the video as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else. Oh, if, if they're expensive, if they're too expensive, uh, please message me. Please let me know and I will send you a code to either give you a pretty significant discount uh, or just a free sh or see if I can do a free shirt. You know, give a, get a free thing. But, uh, you know, there's a couple different designs. I'm working on a few other uh, designs as well um, that uh, after Saturday you might see one of the designs that uh, might be coming out uh, with the shirt so um, excited to do that show excited to see some folks uh, on on the zoom stuff we're going to be deciding when to do the actual big official show the one hour one man zoom comedy show that I'll be doing uh, um, you know uh, after that test show. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything else that I need to tell you guys. I don't think there is. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday. I hope you guys had a good productive Friday and are, are planning to have a nice productive uh, Friday evening. Once again, I'm sorry this was late. Um, like I said, I, I kind of just had this thing of like, yeah, I want to stay up and watch a fucking movie. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. I don't think I'm going to be doing that a whole lot more because I'm old and I can't pull off those like 2, 3 a.m. nights as much as I, I used to. Um, and I also want to make sure that I'm up and energized and being able to keep up on all the things that I want to keep up on. You know, having having that regularity is important uh, in the time of the quarantine. So uh, yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys, uh, some of you guys tomorrow in that Zoom show. Uh, make sure you guys are taking care of each other. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Uh, until tomorrow, we'll see you on the road, folks.